worship of the sun god Mithra found its way through the Persian, Grecian, and Roman empires. Not only that, but aspects of that worship can still be found in today's contemporary Christianity. The pagans of antiquity were well aware of that fact. They challenged those calling themselves Christians to defend themselves regarding the association of aspects of paganism with the worship of Christ. In a futile attempt to do so, the first century Christian apologist Justin Martyr wrote that elements of Mithraism were actually derived from Christianity and that wicked devils had imitated Christianity. Tertullian, a second century theologian, said basically the same thing. Both Justin and Tertullian attempted to defend elements of their faith which were similar and sometimes exactly the same as Mithraic rituals. The problem is that many of those Mithraic precepts predate Christianity by centuries. Let's take a look at one aspect of Mithraism that Tertullian attempts to defend, the use of the cross as a Christian symbol. The pagans of Tertullian's day knew that the sign of the cross was an image that had been adopted from the worship of pagan gods. Having been challenged, Tertullian in his work known as Apology attempts to explain. If any of you think we render superstitious adoration to the cross, in that adoration he is a sharer with us. We have shown before that your deities are derived from shapes modeled from the cross. But you also worship victories, for in your trophies the cross is the heart of the trophy. The camp religion of the Romans is all through a worship of the standards, a setting the standards above all gods. Well, as those images decking out the standards are ornaments of crosses, all those hangings of your standards and banners are robes of crosses. In another work entitled Prescription Against Heresy, Tertullian indicates that the Mithras placed a symbol similar to that in use among the Christians upon their foreheads. The question will arise, by whom is to be interpreted the sense of the passages which make for heresies? by the devil, of course, to whom pertain those wiles which pervert the truth, and who, by the mystic rites of his idol, vies even with the essential portion of the sacraments of God. He too baptizes some, that is, his own believers and faithful followers. He promises the putting away of sins by a labor of his own. And if my memory serves me, Mithra, in the kingdom of Satan, sets his mark on the foreheads of his soldiers. Tertullian's statement is extremely revealing. What he calls the main points of Christianity, which he calls sacraments, were the same precepts that the pagans applied to idols. Aspects of pagan sun worship never had anything to do with Jesus. Let us heed the admonition of the book of 1 John. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Earnestly contending for the faith, once delivered to the saints, I'm Richard Reeves with Just the Facts.